Are you ready to trade in that old beater that you've been sticking under your bed for years and years and years that you don't want to play? That 1970s, that 1960s, that 1980s? That's 1985. Guitar, it's time to take a look at swapping that sort of vintage stuff for something you can actually play. Hey, it's me, Baxter. And me, Jonathan. We're here at Casino Guitars. Thanks for joining us once again. This has been a lot of fun. And I've known you for at least two weeks now. And watch the gray in our beards get grayer as we've done this. But um, I call it the toothpaste effect. God, it's I everywhere know. now. Like, it's, it's just all, all over. Out. Gets into the chest eventually. That's the worst part. Oof. But no, so I've noticed it's like I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Fender Custom Shop. Yes. The Gibson Custom Shop. I love boutique guitars like Echo Park, Castadosa. All these weird things have just sort of entered my DNA. And I love them. I can't get any more Echo Park, so I keep... I guess that's another thing, but I've always had this draw for vintage stuff too, right? Right. But so much of the vintage stuff I've found and collected or bought is not really that fun to play. True. So what can I do with this, Johnny? <laughs> Send it to us. And <laughs> he's, no, he's not kidding. <laughs> no, it, 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 we're just we're just sort of we were thinking about it too. Like it's yeah. if you're wanting. A Fender Custom Shop, one of these cool new boutique things, or you know, and even if it's not we're, not, we're not Gibson dealers. One of those, we'll connect you with the right one who would actually be willing to do this. Like we're taking, we're, we're interested in some of those weird '70s things. Obviously '60s stuff too. That's a no-brainer. But some of the stuff that you've been sitting on, you know, yeah, I've got this five thousand dollar sort of averaged out, you know, 1960s Jaguar Jazzmaster. I do love offsets. I, I, I've, I have too many of them myself, and I don't. I don't flip them, I just hang on to them. We're sort of weird for offsets right here. You, you haven't gotten there yet. No. Uh, I mean, I've had, had I've, one. I've owned two or three Jaguars in my life. What do you gig with? Uh, either one of my two Fender Custom Shops or my 335. Almost always. Yes, one and, of and then you have the, the Falcon as well. I have the Falcon. It's a little more, you know, Specific. But You're yes. playing all newer based instruments. Yeah, the only thing I occasionally mess around with is that 78 Tele, the Deluxe. But I needed to uh, change out some tuners. It didn't stay in tune quite as, okay. quite as good. And that was after like refretting and some and some work. It's a lot of work. Uh, I mean, Derek's like 72. He has like there's zero frets on that thing. It's, yeah, no. Like, well, it's it's, like again, if he was gonna like go out and play with that guitar. He'd have to fret it, refret it. I mean, I wouldn't because I have finesse. You have finesse. And I can handle it. No, it's but seriously, like, we're like thinking, like, if you have those old vintage guitars that you've been sitting on, there, like, you're like, you know, and it's worth like four, five, maybe six thousand dollars, and you want to swap it for a Fender Custom Shop, like, let us know. We we've never actually, we've never really done that before. We yeah, haven't, but it'd be kind of neat. It'd be kind of uh, cool. I think it's like you said, if you're, if you got a guitar like that that you don't play, right? That's like, the key. like you know, what I mean, if you're collecting, it's one thing, right? If you're you know, the old guitars just bring you joy. That's cool. But if, if you're just thinking, man, I should hang on to this thing for no real reason, you're not going to have a collection. You're not going to, like, flip it for crazy money, you know, a 10 years these, from now. Yeah, a lot of these aren't, like, flipping for crazy money guitars uh, anyway. Maybe oh. down, maybe 15 years from now. Who knows? Maybe. God. Well, it's a bit of a, again, like I said, if you're just an individual and you have a, a guitar like that, it just maybe maybe it doesn't make sense for you. Well, this is what I, like, realized when yeah. we were at the guitar show. The We were at the B3 Asheville Guitar Show just to, over the weekend and it was a ton of fun and I was watching people like swap in and trade and like I even had guys would stop me hey casino guitars and they'd like they'd want to throw a guitar up on like a garbage can like in the case obviously and they'd open up like how much I had it happen multiple times like I'd like to sell us like $2,500 $1,500 I'm like ah it's just not for us right now but I was like man like how fun is that it's really like, fun it's just like you're like swap it's like trading Pokemon cards which I've never done. <laughs> That's like, one of my son's biggest joys in life right now. Really? He didn't even play Pokemon. He just, him and his friends, they just have all these crazy cards. That's really cool. They know which cards are cool. Like, if they were going to play. They're like little guitar collectors. They really are. Because they're never going to play. Because well, um, Derek's, Derek's <laughs> son's gotten into gardening lately. Okay. It's an inside joke. Sorry, I'm going to enjoy that one later. He'll watch this like 10 years from now, like when Derek and I are dead. Right. His, Derek's son will be watching that. Years. Uh, we probably, who knows? Dead, I mean, we're we're going to die fine. some horrible death together. Let's um, see 60. And we're going to be so grumpy in our death. To, God, why do we have to die this true. way? Oh, I'm so mad. But um, my, my, I've already predicted my death. It's going to be Andrew, my old student that we used to call Mary. He's, gonna, he's, he's in the Air Force now. He's going to come with a meat cleaver and diapers and just like end me for calling, calling him Mary for 
like three years in a row. But that's another story. That's right. He deserved it. His name is Andrew, but I call him Harry. It was a lot of fun. But no, it's like a, it, it was so much fun. And I want to be able to do that with folks too. You know, it's like, that is um, fun. it's like, you know, because you know, like, we have a guitar store. We have all, we have access to some of the greatest guitars ever made. And like, and then some of us have these addictions and sometimes want to get like these weird vintage things too that are not really worth as much or just kind of cool and weird. And <laughs> what, let it was, rip. I, I, I saw a, uh, I saw a post the other day in one of the guitar groups I met on Facebook. Oh Lord. And the guy said he was getting rid of, it was a vintage, uh, deluxe reverb. Cool. And he said, I'm going to hate that I got rid of this. He's like, but I'm on my YOLO quest to own every great amp. So like his philosophy was... He wants to go through them all. Yes. Okay, that's cool. So he's cool. not, he's, he loves He's not amp. collecting it, but he, he wants to get... The well, because I don't think, you know, he's probably at a point in his life where he cannot amass them all, right? Which I can relate or, to. Or that's the game. Or that's the game. And that's cool. I've never thought so of it that that's way. Kind of, I, I, me neither really. And I thought that's really fun. Do you know what I mean? So maybe you just got Ooh. something that is cool that now it's time for the next thing. That would be a good reason to maybe trade your... Yeah, because I remember Derek doing that too with like, he, he had like a Gibson acoustic and he pivoted for a Gibson yep. electric and then he pivoted for something else. And, he got, and there, was a, there was a pedal steel somewhere in there. I don't know where that crap came from. And then I think he, then he got like a, a little like, um, it was like a World War One like RC remote control yeah. airplane, Red Baron for his, his son, for the gardening <laughs> at one point. I don't know. But um. No, it's, well, it's fun, too. And here's, here's the one, weird ones, too. Like, if you got some of those 70s pancake Les Pauls, let it rip. They're, I mean, they're not, historically, they've been, they've been trashed upon, right? But as we say here at Casino, the tone is in the syrup, right? Right there between those two lovely layers of wood, they put secret tone sauce in there. Secret tones. Your pancake guitar might be a tone machine. You didn't even know. You're making fun of it. Tones in the glue. People I made like fun. Of, they made fun of this. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, that's part of Mar Martin's marketing. Hide glue. <laughs> it sounds better. It's like so. What we had. But Absolutely. It, it does sound Absolutely. better, I guess. Brazilian rosewood fretboard's got to be the Good best, right? Apart. Can you tell um, the difference in tone of a Brazilian fretboard? Sure, abs yeah, Baxter. By a micrometer, hundred <laughs> percent. No, but like, have fun with these. These guitars are the. If you're not like playing it and. You, and and you want to move it, let us know. And if we're not willing to take it or figure out something with you, we'll point you in the direction. Like we do that all the time. I have other friends that are either shops or collectors. Who or are looking for that stuff. Or swappers. You know? We're not trying to make a dime off of that. We just do it because it's fun. It's the guitar game. And like that's what the guitar shows can be about too. I mean, everybody's trying to make a buck, it seems. Right, right. That's, that's yeah. But not, when I was there, I've, my, I told my guys, like, we're not here to make any money. We're here to have fun. Yeah. We're here to maybe we're buy. We're there to swap. That's what I was saying. The swap, the, swap mania. But that's what we're saying about that's this. That's what I'm saying. Like, the swap with us. It is like it is like the Pokemon cards or you know, as a kid, it was baseball cards or whatever. But it's just it's just fun. You got something cool and like vintage, and like it, or just older, or it's something cool and new, and like it's it might be weird. So like just swap now. Like it might take a few rev stars to get up to a custom shop, but they're really cool. That's like the uh, what's the thing? The story about the guy starting with a paperclip and trading. Yeah, I think it's like a house or something ridiculous. Um, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe that either. But that would be fun. We did just get a Rev Star in over the weekend, and they're great guitars too. They are great guitars. Little wily Yamahas. I was just think about. They uh, are great guitars. There's a really cool guy, and his lovely bride came in. They've been married for um, just a short time, two weeks, I believe. I made that. Up. They've been married for years, but it makes it sound more romantic. Two weeks. And they came. They bought a beautiful Taylor, but they, he traded some a Rev Star and another little Fender amp in there. It was, cool. It was a cool. He got a great Builder's Edition 814 CD, I believe. Nice. Stunner. That one. That one sounded sweet. It had. I think because the tone was in the glue, probably, or whatever. Whatever other that fancy trick, new age glue. Whatever trick us us either YouTubers or manufacturers tell you that why you have to buy this new thing. Just have fun with it though. Like, I want to like unshackle like the thing. Like I'm holding on to this for the extra reasons. It's like just if you're not playing it, you're not having fun with it. Get rid of it. Unless you unless holding on to it's your fun. Or like the, what, that's that's the, the the bottom line is if it makes you happy to hold on to it, do it. If it the, makes you happy to trade it because you want something new. And I had a happiness in that like last night, like I was sort of I was rearranging like the guitars. I have like a little five guitar rack in my apartment, you know. Yeah. And that's and I have to pick which guitars stay in there. Stay in there. And I had to pull one. I had to pull out my Fender Custom Shop Telecaster with Abigail Yavaro Master Build Todd Krause. I pulled that out because I was going to put a vintage Jazz Master in there. It's pretty cool. I need a spot. I had to choose like, do I get rid of the '78 Deluxe Gibson? Or the, I have this one of the Fender Custom Shop Strat. I have a 
I have an Echo Park in there. I have a 61 Gibson in there. I have a baritone Castadosa. I was like, whoa, I got a bass. And I hate, you know, I keep you know, cheap guitars. <laughs> no, no, but, but, it, but it's like, but I have to, I, I don't have that many. It's like, I have to, okay, I have more than are on the rack. Jeez. Yeah. That's good. That's and then, good. then I had the 65, I had the 65 Jaguar on my couch. So I, I can have the five, five in and one on the rack and one on the couch. One to be played That's at all fair. times. That's, That's kind of how my house That's lives. It's like right. keeping one in the chamber, you know? Yes. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Ready to roll. No time to wreck that slide when when shit hits the fan. I'm ready to blast ready. here. I'm ready for the apocalypse. Let's go. I can't wait to watch The Road with my son. That's going to be <laughs> awesome. And by the way, if you haven't seen Dune 2 or Dune 1, the, the redos, they're perhaps some of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made. They're pretty darn good. They're up there. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm very... I just listened to a video this morning about I didn't realize Tolkien did not like Dune. Really? No. Um, Makes sense. Well, thinking I mean, about it. I can understand why he didn't like the author as well, perhaps, because the author is off his rocker. Well, a little bit. And then his son just keeps, like, this thing going, I guess, kept it going for years, too. You know, that's um, I'm a fan of it all. I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to get into it. I, it's, I, I don't know, great movies, great stuff. The Academy Awards were great over the weekend. You got to see John Cena yeah. naked. I mean, I, it was fun. It was a fun thing. <laughs> I didn't watch the Academy Awards, but I've, I've suddenly seen lots of pictures John Cena and Naked. You have to explain that to me later. It, 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 it was, it's just funny that I'm watching the Academy Awards. I'm like, why do I still watch this? It's just because they're, they're making jokes. Like, everybody with their ballots at home, like, see if you want. I'm like, I don't think anybody does that anymore. Like, nobody prints out the ballots and, like, sees how many they won. For, for people to print out the ballots, they would have to, like, watch the movies that are getting rewards. The, these, the, they finally <laughs> fixed that most okay. of these movies were, like, Thank the God. ones that have been most. You know, there's a few that were, like, Archie and stuff that were, like, beyond scale of, but you know, like, but yeah, the fact they're giving Godzilla year one or whatever, an Academy Award was awesome. And then the whole team stood yeah. up with the little mini dot to Godzilla's and like, ah, and it was, it was awesome. They, all right, and then, all right, I'm into that. And that was a great movie, the Godzilla. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. With Logan, we didn't know it was gonna be subtitled. <laughs> Which I love. I feel like you're a funny family. <laughs> Derek and his, his son is going out there just maybe causing maybe the hell. Best. They're the best. Rick, Wait that's a minute, right. is this a freaking musical? <laughs> I think a lot of people didn't realize like the color purple is a musical, you know this new one. Too. I was like, what? And then Barbie got nominated for everything, one sort of nothing, which is sort of like, I was okay with that because it, it's a, it's a fun movie, but it wasn't like a game changing movie. Oppenheimer crushed. How dare you say? I mean, so. oh my God, women are treated unfairly in society. Some. Oh wow, what a new idea. What a great concept. But it, it was a, still a great movie. And I loved. Um, I I loved Ken. He was fan. Ryan Gosling, I hate to say, it, was the greatest part of Barbie. He was, he was hilarious. He's painted on six pack ab too. This was really funny. The hate's gonna flow. About oh, that? This one. Oh yeah. About not liking Barbie that much? Oh yeah. I didn't dislike it. It's just it was like okay. Baxter hates Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm just, well, Oppenheimer's clearly a better movie. Well yeah. It's um that's one of those great movies. No, I've I've already seen posts about it. again, I didn't watch any of the And poor Bradley stuff. Cooper spending six years like perfecting how to be Leonard Bernstein for conducting for six minutes in this movie. Nothing. Um, and, and, you know, Killian Murphy gets the, the best picture, best actor for, like, The Stare. Which, yeah. he, which I think oh, he's amazing. I loved every minute of Oppenheimer. I, I can't wait to watch it again, but not with my kids because there's some weird sex stuff and I can't. Oh, yeah. I can explain Band of Brothers, but I, that's a little explain. This whole, this whole triangle is not going to work. But uh, anyway, that's our Academy Awards wrap-up, too. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Finish guitars, old guitars in your closet. Trade them. Give us a call. Give somebody else. And God bless the Irish. That Academy Award, that was awesome. Click like, subscribe. Hit the bell. Peace be with you. Bye, Derek. <laughs>